Okay, so 10 years ago, um, Best Man, Chris Reed, Dan North, and Jez Humble gave a talk that is where the term delivery pipeline came from. In that time, there's been a lot of questions, but the number one is still, where the heck do I start? Uh, it's an impossible question, but one of the methods that you can use is something called value stream mapping, which is just a way to draw out what you're doing to really gain some understanding in a you know, shared understanding, frankly. See, timing. Um, so now, it's a really kind of a daunting topic, frankly, if you look into it. You know, these, these nice, easy to read charts, you know, what could possibly go wrong? Um, but obviously, I'm going to give a much higher level overview here today. I'll just give you an inkling if you want to learn more, frankly, the goal of an, uh, a night. So why do this? First off, you gain a common understanding. You have to know what you're doing if you want to make it better. Um, so I mean, if you're honest with yourself, nobody here knows every step you guys do from idea to production. Um, you may think you do, but I guarantee you don't. Uh, you also want to establish a baseline. You can't measure improvement if you don't know where you started. Um, you'll help identify waste. There's steps that are happening that don't need to that not everybody knows about. Uh, and you know, DevOps, raise visibility. Everybody knows what everyone's doing. Uh, this usually starts with a meeting. Um, this is the meeting we all hate. Half the company's there. Uh, but it's important. The people that do the task need to be in the room. Not the person that knows what the person does, but the person that actually does the talk, or the task, I mean, yeah. Um, so this is the, the one I chose today. Um, we're doing a value stream map on getting a teenager to do his chores. <laughs> so the team gets together, and you know, we look at the process, and we talk about it. Um, first thing we want to do, is, though, is we want to acknowledge that there's you know, certain challenges and constraints. Uh, he's 18, he thinks he's too old to do chores. Um, but there's a regulatory constraint that if he's not doing chores, he's paying rent. <laughs> um, so he chooses the chores. But that said, now we can look at the process itself. So what you do is you map out the steps first. These are the things we do. And you usually want to do it backwards. Um, one of the reasons for that is just to avoid muscle memory. Um, say the alphabet backwards. You can do it, but you have to think about it, and you probably aren't going to skip letters. Then you want to look at the lead time. How much time do I spend between these things? So if you're new to continuous delivery and so forth, this might be waiting for an environment. You might be waiting for a person that's too busy. I never can remember the character's name in the Phoenix Project. You know, there, thank you. <laughs> yeah, good old Brent. But you have to make sure that you're really doing every step. So not surprisingly, the steps that aren't documented, those are the ones that take the most time. You know, because there's no common understanding. Other people don't know that they're required. You know, but they are. You also need to count again, what actually happens. You know, so where I live, the city has decided that the garbage cans and the recycling need to be on opposite ends of the earth. Um, so it takes a little longer. They can't take out both at the same time. Uh, you also need to acknowledge variables. Just because it has the same name doesn't mean it's the same task. Uh, we live on a double lot, and our smallest dog is 95 pounds. That one's 150. Um, this is not cleaning up after a chihuahua. Okay, so it takes a little, a little longer. But also pay attention to the room. So he hates the dishes so much, he offered to pay me to do them. <laughs> he works part time at a shoe store, and he wants to pay me to, no, no, I didn't take it, by the way. I'm already pretty good. Um, but also think about quality issues. So I mean, this is a big thing. Things stack up, the kitchen looks bad. You know, so OK, <laughs> this was the process we chose to say that you know, we need to do something about this. So now we draw, going a, further, a little bit deeper, and we map out, again, the current state. So to get the dishes done, you know, these are the current tasks. Um, you know, there's probably a little bit of waste in here. Uh, it's not necessarily, again, very high quality, um, but there it is. So when we're doing this, don't just think, oh, I have to tweak number four. Consider completely disruptive change. Turns out if we flip this process around, empty the dishwasher when it's clean, add the things as they get dirty, uh, then the kitchen's never dirty, and he spends half the time. So what we end up with is you know, saving a massive amount of time. Not surprisingly, most of it's in the tasks that we shouldn't be doing anyway. Get rid of the change control board. Um, you're deploying more often. You know, there's less risk, et cetera. Um, so summarize. You've you got to have a baseline. You can't measure what you don't know. Um, count the actual work, not what you think you're doing. Uh, stop doing the silly stuff. And the question to where do I start is wherever the low-hanging fruit is, wherever I can make the highest impact with the least amount of effort. Thank you.